And welcome again to the Study Bible Bible Study, where we study the Bible with study Bibles. And Revelation 17, 14 tells us, And these shall make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb shall conquer them, for he is, Lord of lords, he is, King of kings, and they who are with him are called and chosen and faithful. Isaiah 61, 1 and 2. The Spirit of the Lord our God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the broken heart, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening up of the prison to whom them are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn. In Luke 4.21, he began to say unto them, This day the scripture is fulfilled in your ears. Amen and God bless. This is our Trinity talk, our third party view of Augustine's view of the Trinity. Now, where Christ was sent to, Augustine understands as the incarnation of the Word through Mary. He was sent literally into humanity. We should understand that this, that it was not the just, it was not just the man who the Word became that was sent, but that the Word was sent to become man. The connection is between Galatians 4.4 4 and John 1.14. When therefore the fullness of time had come, God had sent his Son made of woman, made unto the law. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Emphasis is on the mind. Now Augustine thus brings together the concepts of the sending of the Son of Man and the making of the Son of Man so that in the case of Jesus to be sent is to be made man. He came by the way of man. Now the issue may be further clarified by asking what the difference is between being sent and being created. Although Augustine does not ask this question explicitly. It is implicit in his argument. Being sent, he says, has to do with the appearing in the flesh, being given or taken on a certain form. Now what appears and what is given form already has life since it is through him that all things were made. And because he whom we call less and when he had been sent was equal to the one who sent him. Not only before he was sent and so made, but before all things were, being created on the other hand involves not only being given form, but also being given life as well. Thus, whereas Adam was first formed and then given life, Jesus, in whom was life, took on human form. Thus, in the case of Jesus, to be made sent is the same as saying to be made man. And to be made man is the same as saying to appear outwardly created in bodily form. It was in this form only that Augustine says that Christ was less than the Father, lesser in so far as he was made and made in so far that he was sent. The notion of sending applies also the Holy Spirit. It is only the Father Augustine shows who is nowhere said to have been sent. Moreover, the sending of the Son was not without the Holy Spirit, for Mary, for of Mary, Matthew writes, she was found to be with child of the Holy Spirit, Matthew 1, 18. Now the prophecy of Isaiah reads, And now the Lord and his Spirit has sent me, Isaiah 48, 16. Now Augustine tries to show, rather weakly one might say, that the Son even sent himself. His conclusion, however, is cogent, for he ends his argument by stating the three have but one will and are indivisible in their working. His second point has to do with the way in which the Holy Spirit was sent as compared to the Son, although outward forms differ significantly in both instances, the very substance of God is never seen. The difference is attribution, 
attribution of station. Example that the Son is sometimes said to be less than the Father, whereas the Holy Spirit is not. It is because a creative form was not assumed by the Holy Spirit to appear under in the same way the Son of Man was assumed by the Word of God in the form in which is to present his person to the world. The Augustine's argument is that in what he himself calls here a tangled question is that firstly although the the holy spirit was sent he was never said to be less than the father because he created the form he took in being sent was never permanently attached to his person nor we cannot say of the holy spirit that he is of god and dove or of god and fire as we say of the son he is of god and man rather the sending of the holy spirit involved the coming into being of a physical form in order to signify something and then to pass away. Now secondly, Augustine argues that although the Holy Spirit who appeared and created in transitory forms is said to have been sent, the Father who also appeared in created form through Theophanes is nevertheless not said to have that the Father has not got anyone else to be from or proceed from as do the Son and the Holy Spirit to be sent. Augustine concludes is the same to proceed is the same as to proceed from and just as being born means for the son his being from the father so his being sent means his being known to be from him So his being sent means his being known to be from him. Now just as the Holy Spirit, his being, the gift of God, means his proceeding from the Father, so being sent means his being known to proceed from him. Finally, the distinction between the Son and the Holy Spirit proceeding from the Father and the Son and the Father proceeding from no one is found in the difference in mission. Now the mission of Theophanes is in which God appears in created form is not to mediate but but to be a preparation for the coming of the Son of God who would come from the seed of Abraham to mediate between God and men. Now furthermore, theophanies which occurred prior to the coming of Christ were partial revelations of God's salvation. They were mediated through angels, that is, they were always achieved through created objects. In contrast, since the mission of the Son was to mediate between God and men, Christ needed to become incarnate in order to fulfill his mission. Consequently, the incarnation of the Son and the coming of the Holy Spirit were not achieved through anything that was created prior to their respective missions. The result is that there is no ontological distinction between the sender and the sent in the divine missions of the Son and the Holy Spirit as there is in the Old Testament theophanies. Now Augustine's language of the divine processions mentioned above is taken further in the writings of Pseudo and Dionysus, who speaks of the beneficial processions of God, God and his transcendent nature or substance is one undifferentiated unity. He says it is unity which is totally undifferentiated and transcendent. Differations within the Godhead have to do with the benign processions and revelations of God. That is, it is in the acts of self-giving that God, while remaining one in substance, dispenses itself outwards towards multiplicity in order to impart being, life, wisdom and the other gifts of its all creative goodness. The incarnation of the Word then is understood as an act of God proceeding from himself without ceasing to be a unity. In order to give humanity what belongs to the divine nature, this brings us to the important prefix, remain particularly as it implies to the oneness of Christ with the Father. 
Now this, in fact, is the central focus of Augustine's entire thesis. His whole discussion on the person and the work of the mediator is a demonstration to the eternal unity of the Godhead concurrently in its works of redemption and its eternal essence. Now in saying that the true mediator remains one with God, he infers that the oneness must be ready. The oneness must already have been there before it can remain, a point which we have already discussed at length. Now the point of Augustine now wants to focus our attention on is that all goods, all God's work of redemption and is going out of himself into humanity and bringing forth humanity back into himself that is in the incarnation the suffering the death the resurrection of the son and the sending of the holy spirit god remains one more specifically Christ, mediator between God and men, has not been made visible in such a way that he ceased to be invisible with the Father, but rather he appeared outwardly in bodily form, yet inwardly in uncreated spiritual form, remaining always hidden from mortal eyes. Thus when the scripture says that Christ was made that Christ was made man. This is not to be understood as in the sense of transformation or change or substance. For Augustine writes that neither the Godhead changed into a creature and ceasingly became to cease to be a Godhead, nor the creature changed into the Godhead and ceased to ceasingly be the creature. The result of the two identities in one person, an inner divine identity which is not now seen but understood by faith in an outer identity which is seen augustine is intent that there is no confusion of these two identities but that each remains complete in the entire and entire in the one person of christ the son of god the son of man because the form of god took on the form of a servant each is God and each is man, but each is God because of the taking on and each is man because of the taking on. That is our Trinity talk session number four. This is the study Bible Bible study where we study the Bible with study Bibles. And Isaiah 61.1 The Spirit of the Lord our God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening up of the prison to them who are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn. And Luke 4, 21, And he began to say unto them, This day the scripture is fulfilled in your ears. The Messiah is here. And Revelation 17, 14 tells us, And these shall make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb shall conquer them. For he is Lord of lords, he is King of kings. And they who are with him are called and chosen and faithful. And God bless and amen.